Hey, welcome to a fresh edition of the only weekend business program on Channel Television, Capital Market Live on Channel Television. I'm Laddie Williams. Let's uh, begin the show with a review of uh, the global stock uh, markets now, the performance on Friday. Uh, we see major bosses around the globe ended uh, Friday's trading session mix as investors appeared cautious ahead of the interest rate decisions from the U.S. Federal Reserve next week, with markets pricing in around a 72% chance of a pause in rate hikes. In Wall Street, the Dow Jones Industrial Average and the S&P 500 ended the day with more than 0.1% gain as investors looked ahead to upcoming inflation data while the Nasdaq Composite rose by 0.16%. In Europe, the markets were slightly lower, ahead of key monetary policy meetings by the European Central Bank, where many analysts expect another 25 basis point hike, despite the freshly declared Eurozone recession. UK's FTSE 100 index dropped 0.25%, Germany's DAX had lost 0.49%, while France's CAC index that was down by 0.12%. Meanwhile, it's positive close for markets across the Asia-Pacific region, as investors uh, digest China's consumer price index, which saw a 0.2% rise in May. Japan's Nikkei 225 ended the day up nearly 2%, while China's Shanghai Composite uh, Index gained 0.55%, while Hong Kong's Hang Seng Index um, closed the day up 0.47%. And back home, despite profit-taking in three sessions, the domestic uh, stock market ended uh, the week with a 0.20% rise in the um, all-share index as it dropped below the 56,000-point level, saw a moderate gain, uh, which countered the impact of sell pressure from other high-value equities as largely attributed to investors' interest in Airtel uh, Africa's 1.8% uh, price advance, which lifted the market. Sectoral performance of equities was also mostly positive, except for the industrial goods counter, while the activity chart was weaker than the prior week as trading volume and value declined by 15.1 and 1.4% week on week accordingly. Meanwhile, the shares of Viterna is top among 51 gainers with 45.4% increase. John Holt uh, leads 26 others down by 26.7% while the trio of UBA, uh, FCMB, and Niger Police Microfinance Bank are major contributors uh, to a total of 2.19 billion shares uh, traded this week. And President Bola Tinibu has suspended uh, CBN Governor Gordon Mayfile and uh, Definitely, that's uh, rippled around social media um, today, and definitely we've heard from um, the DSS, and uh, it is official right now. The CBN governor is, is suspended. Let's uh, get a sense of how the capital market in Nigeria might react to this. Definitely, we know the market was closed when we got this announcement. Let's see what's going to happen um, come next week. Joining me now is Andy Saku, a stockbroker. Uh, Capital Care Trust and Securities. Joining me via Zoom. Great to have you on the show. Hello, Mr. Saku. All right. I uh, guess we're still trying to get Mr. Saku up there. Well, if you can hear me, Mr. Saku, well, we'll come back. Uh, we'll come back to Mr. Saku. Uh, soon, soon enough. But let's uh, look at some news now. We see Nigeria's uh, Debt Management Office has announced two federal governments of Nigeria savings bonds uh, for June. As part of its monthly subscription offer of the debt instrument, a statement from the DMO uh, listed the two uh, bond issuances for the month as the two-year 10.301% uh, per annum FGN savings bond which will be due by June 14th, 2025, and a three-year 11.301% per annum FGN savings bond due um, June 14th, 2026. The subscription offer for the bond issuance opened uh, Monday, June 5th, and closed on June the 9th. That's uh, Friday this week, while a settlement will be carried out on June uh, the 14th. And the Securities and Exchange Commission says it's collaborating with uh, the Standards Organization of Nigeria to develop a framework for commodities trading in the country. 
The director general of the SEC, Lamido Yugura, who made this known to journalists, explained that um, Nigeria has various commodities that could be exported in a bid to grow the economy, provide jobs for its citizens, and provide foreign exchange. He also mentioned that the commission is pleased about the new government's uh, determination to support the commodity sector so it will uh, further consolidate the SEC's efforts in that space. All right, let's try and get uh, Mr. Saku now. Mr. Andy Saku, I don't know if you can hear me now. Mr. Andy Saku is a stockbroker, Capital Care and Trust. Can you hear me? Yes, good evening, Laji. Uh, good evening, Mr. Saku. Great to have you. So, um, yes, it's all about the suspension of uh, the CBN governor, Mr. Gordon Emefile. How do you see, um, and this definitely happened when the markets were closed, um, come next week, the market is going to open Tuesday. What do you think will be the reaction of investors to this uh, big news? Uh, certainly, the suspension of the SY Central Bank governor, uh, Mr. Mayfield is grand news to the market. Um, I wouldn't say it was totally unexpected, but be that as it may, I think it will be premature at this point in time to begin to speculate on what might happen or not happen with respect to his suspension. And that's largely because a suspension, to my mind, is not a sack. And be that as it may also, it does give me the possibility to think that whether he's sacked or not sacked, there's provision to the effect that there's still investigation going on, which is the reason for his suspension. So I think it would be wise for us to give those who are carrying out whatever investigation that is going on the opportunity to unravel the issues that may be on the in the underbelly, and then we'll see to what extent uh, such uh, investigation may result into an eventual sack or not. However, already, already we have uh, someone that is sitting in his seat. We do think that he has been part of the system, and I'm not actually expecting so much deviation, uh, particularly because he's just going to be sitting in an acting capacity so it might do us great uh, value to be patient, allow, allow the cost of the law to take its course, while all issues that may have culminated in his suspension uh, are properly and thoroughly investigated. Yeah, we'll definitely be um, looking out for that. But looking at the process now of the suspension, you know, by the president, normally the National Assembly should have a say I mean, this is there a risk of you know foreign investors getting wary of the president making this decision unilaterally? Yeah, well, to say the president acted unilaterally might not be in consonance with practice or precedent. He's actually not the first Syrian governor to be so suspended. The circumstances may not be exactly the same, but the operating word in this decision is the fact that he's under suspension. Uh, it's also not um, uh, unique to our climb. We have seen situations in more developed markets where uh, key individuals holding key institutions like the Securities and Exchange Commission and the like in other climbs also undergoing this kind of process. And that's why I think that at this juncture, we don't have to speculate beyond the normalcy. Um, let's give room. Uh, I do believe also that whatever decision the interim uh, person that is sitting in his seat, it's not going to recreate or make up. Uh, Mr. Sako, I think you might have to unmute. Okay, I, I don't think um, I don't think uh, Mr. Sako can um, hear me there, but we did hear from him that he's saying that we should um, hold on. You know, right now, don't make. Uh, Mr. Saku, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, I, I lost you for a moment there. But, uh, yeah, still, you know, on this, um, you did mention, you know, who's going to be handing over to, at this point, we've seen he's been ordered to yeah. hand over to Mr. Uh, Folashudu Shonubi, Deputy Governor Operations Directorate. Yes. You know, and 
Further reports show that normally uh, during the MPC meetings, he's always been in support of rate hikes, you know, <laughs> with, at the meetings there. We know how rate hikes, you know, impact the markets. What do you think um, yeah. going forward, what are you seeing for monetary policy, you know, in Nigeria going forward? Okay, I don't know if you got this bit when I made the comment about the three key variables that any central bank governor in any way in the world would be contending with at any given time. These are namely inflation, foreign exchange rates, and interest rates. Incidentally, the three don't all tally at the same time because in trying to achieve stability in one, you tend to expose the other. So that will remain the business of the monetary policy regulators. And I think that even the incumbent who is going to be sitting in an acting capacity will still contend with those issues. One of the key problems that I think Emefile had to contend with, and which I don't personally support, is the fact that he was trying to use interest rate to be chasing inflation, and which to my mind is like chasing a shadow. That is the reason he has not been able, or rather he was not able, to keep interest rates muted. At the, almost all the last seven or so MPCs, we've continued to see this chase going on. So if inflation should increase and the spirit of MFLA is still pervading the landscape, then you'll be expecting a hike in NPR. And that, to my mind, is going to be doing a greater injustice to the overall economy. Yeah, we know that uh, experts and investors are, have been quite wary about um, interest rate hikes, and we've seen that cycle, you know, globally. But let's um, review the, the, the market for the week. Now, we've seen, you know, added positive, but we did see some profit taking, and we got to that 56,000 level, but lost it. How do you see uh, market performance for this week on the local boards? Yeah, well, overall, the market was positive, uh, even though not largely so. We saw a lot more positivity in the last uh, week uh, preceding this, which, you know, was a positive greeting for the incumbent uh, government uh, with that phenomenal uh, increase, a daily increase of one day in excess of 5%. But much has re remained largely muted ever since that particular experience. However, it is also incumbent to note that year-to-date performance has remained positive in excess of 9% on aggregate. We have not yet achieved or returned to the highest point we, we crossed this year, which is the 56,000 plus uh, position you were making reference to. However, I do think that the variables in the market currently support a strong resilience uh, because prices of most stocks uh, are largely on the price, uh, given the fundamental valuations around it. Uh, and Mr. Saku, uh, very quickly now, before, from what we've seen this weekend, what are you expecting for the local boss next week? I'm positive. Uh, I'm sorry to say I'm an adding positive uh, person for the market. <laughs> and that is not because it is an emotional uh, slate. It is based on the key issues that companies have continued to report sterling performances across board tech sectors from agriculture to banking to other sectors they've been doing fairly well and i think the market can just but reward them for such sterling performances all right i guess i can safely call you a bull um, at this uh, instance. But uh, do hold on, uh, Mr. Saka. We'll come back to you um, right after this break. The conversation continues in a moment. Do stay with us. Welcome back. Still watching Capital Market Live on Channel Television. Well, to some news now, it's the economic think tank, Financial Derivatives Company Limited. Uh, it's forecast Nigeria's inflation rate for May uh, will be higher, 22.7%, up from 22.2% uh, recorded in April. According to the FDC, the major drivers of inflation for last month uh, remain money supply growth, shortage of commod uh, commodity supply uh, due to the effect of planting season and the depreciation of Naira, uh, the currency's market. 
FDC also mentions that the inflation data this time is not reflective of the effects of the 150% increase in the price of petrol resulting from the removal of fuel subsidy by the government. And the full impact of the petrol price adjustment will be felt in the inflation numbers for June, with initial estimates put at 25.2%. Meanwhile, the National Bureau of Statistics is expected to release the May inflation report on June the 15th. I guess markets will be definitely looking forward um, to that. To our next conversation now, the Securities and Exchange Commission has expressed its uh, readiness to confront the and find solutions to the challenges that make uh, companies delist from the capital market. At least three-quarter companies have expressed interest in delisting uh, from the NGX. Uh, let's do, uh, we still have with us here Mr. Andy Saku, stockbroker, Capital Care Trust. Thank you for staying on, Mr. Saku. Great pleasure, always. So, what would you say is the reason for some of these uh, companies, you know, uh, uh, delisting, you know, from the NGX and showing intentions to delist? Okay, so I think we should start from the uh, fundamental perspective, which is that the capital market has provision for freedom of entry as well as exit. So if you like, compare it to um, a marriage situation, even though it's not exactly so, where as people say to themselves, I do. And they walk out, depending on the length of time they choose to stay together, they come back to say, Sorry, I do, it's no longer holding waters. So by and large, companies get listed on any exchange for certain basic reasons. And if they discover at some point along the line that this uh, marriage with the exchange does not any longer deliver to them the desirable values they had long intended, they may want to exit such a market. That's talking specifically in terms of where the company's decision is based on their voluntary action. However, there are also situations where a company may be forced under certain circumstances to delist, largely because they are unable to cope with either the listing requirements or they themselves think that the cost of listing has become prohibitive rather than enthusiastic for the operations of their business. So over the years, and this is also across the globe, many companies get listed and at some point feel constrained to delist. There are very many reasons across different jurisdictions, across different asset classes also. Um, so yes, you're right to say that uh, uh, three or so companies are on the verge of the listing as we speak on our boss. But let it be on record that over the years, even in our climb, at least if you take a look uh, between 2005 and date, you are likely not to for, uh, have um, over 120 companies delisting for various reasons. But largely, uh, in our experience, it has proven to be much more of, you know, uh, regulatory uh, induced delisting. Right, and just like you did mention, you know, when uh, a, a couple is, there's a divorce situation, you know, there's also that situation of who gets what, you know, who gets the house and all of that. But we've seen situations where, you know, minority right. shareholders are quite unimpressed with the way they're treated when the listings happen. You know, how can uh, the SEC assure protection for minority shareholders, you know, making sure that they get what is right, you know, for the minority shareholders? Um, one thing I can say for sure, even though I'm not uh, speaking for SEC, but as a practitioner of some years behind, the, uh, uh, you know, behind me, it's, it's, it's very clear that when the issue of minority interest comes uh, as to delisting, they are the primary people that uh, commission who want to preserve their interest, their integrity, and the like, in order to ensure that nobody, not a single individual, even if the holding is just one unit of that company, is shortchanged. And therefore, there are very stringent rules and regulations 
that not just uh, the Securities and Exchange Commission, but the self-regulated organizations uh, in the name of exchanges whatsoever they put in place to ensure that the interest of the minority investor is duly protected. Um, talking from experience also, companies that particularly like to do uh, voluntary delisting ensure that the price at which they are going to delist is fairly above the you know, average price of the stock on the exchange. Re recall that for you to be able to sell or buy shares and the such a company is listed, it is the operating price on the bus that you'll be trading at. But where the situation of the listing does come in, minority shareholders, and particularly the majority too, have the opportunity to sell or buy those same shares at a price, usually at a premium. So, and that is part of the motivation for delisting, particularly for the minority shareholders anyway. However, if an aggrieved minority interest holder in any company thinks that he's been shortchanged, there are opportunities for seeking redress, starting from the regulators, and if that fails, they can actually go as far as the courts of the land to seek redress. And we have one or two experiences like that, where minority, minority shareholders have had to take such companies either on the verge of the listing uh, uh, or so, you know, to the courts or to the regulators to seek some form of amicable resolution. So they, their interests are usually very much well protected. Right. I guess uh, we all want uh, all interests protected from uh, majority to minority um, uh, shareholders. But w what do you see, you know, listings, you know, on the NGX in the next um, 10 years? Do you think uh, the local boards will be able to attract more listings going forward? As a matter of fact, if you've been walk watching the trajectory over the last 10 years, you will notice that the it, the index has grown by leaps and bounds, not just in terms of the size of listing, but in terms of total valuation of companies and the quality of companies that are coming on board. So talking about the next 10 years, if I see only the level of uh, uh, capitalization that we have as of today, that will be a child's play. I am looking forward to a phenomenal rise uh, uh, in, uh, in, the, in terms of both numbers and size of listings going forward. One of the <laughs> stocks we can't afford to, uh, or companies that we can't afford to wait longer is Dangote Refinery. That certainly will do some great uh, uh, change uh, in terms of positive change uh, for the market. So 10 years is a long time. In the next five years, Ladi, watch it out. The market will certainly have a robust uh, uh, size of leasing of companies, and you'll be there to make the pause. I will definitely be looking forward uh, to that. Thank you uh, so much. And uh, definitely be looking forward to the NNPC Limited also listing. I, I guess you're looking forward to that too. I'm glad you mentioned it. I just gave you one. You've made it two. So the list goes on. <laughs> the list goes on. Fantastic. All right. Thank you so much, Mr. Andy Saku, stockbroker, Capital Care and Trust. It was great having you today. Thank you. Thanks. My pleasure. All right. So uh, finally, on the program, let's bring you some of the key expectations for Nigeria's capital market in the coming week. Uh, traders and investors will be focusing their attention on the May inflation report from the National Bureau of Statistics, which will be released on May, uh, on, uh, released for uh, this uh, next week. And at the bonds market, traders uh, expect an uptick in bond yields amid front loading of significant borrowings uh, for the year by the federal government. Uh, this comes as investors demand higher yields in the face of elevated supply. Over to the Treasury bills market, where yields in the NTP secondary market are expected to expand as liquidity in financial system uh, becomes pressured. In the money market, overnight lending rates is, is expected to head upwards amid squeeze in the system liquidity due to no significant inflows to, finance, to the financial system. And finally, at the FTS market, choppy trading pattern is expected to persist in the week ahead. Investors continue to cherry pick stocks uh, with sound fundamentals. But we did hear from Mr. Andy Sakude. He's expecting a positive outing next week uh, for the market. So, 
Uh, that's the show today. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Vladi Williams. See you again next weekend. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.